Okay, so last week I showed you how to use Huggin to create 360 panoramas with a series of photos. Uh, and we're going to, in, in that video, I uploaded the photos along with some JavaScript to make it allow you to uh, pan full 360 nonstop on uh, desktop browsers as well as mobile devices. Um, that was a script that I did not write. Uh, I got it off GitHub and uh, I did modify it a little bit. And that's what we're going to look at today uh, on getting that script and uh, and modifying a little bit. Open up my web browser here and I actually probably should show you how I got here. It's called Panorama 360 but if you just go to GitHub and do a search on Panorama you'll see that there's 68 JavaScripts uh, for that and I'll click on this JavaScript to narrow it down and it was actually already the second one on the list here uh, the Panorama 360. Uh, um, I'm not going to try to say that guy's name but we'll click on that you can just click this uh, download zip file uh, I'm actually gonna right click it and say copy URL and I'm gonna minimize that and I'm in the folder that I want to have my project in and I'm just gonna w get that zip file I'll unzip it and go into the file the folder it created called panorama 360 master obviously you can rename that folder and in this folder, we've got some subfolders and an index and uh, a small HTML. Uh, index is basically the panorama is the full screen, where the small is it's within inside a, a little uh, element on the page. In fact, we can look at both of them. Uh, let me let me type things properly. Google Chrome. I'll open up the index. So here it is. This is the default index. Uh, not only can you scroll, right now I'm scrolling with my mouse wheel. I can also grab and drag as you would drag uh, with a touch screen. You also notice a little uh, gray box here that highlights when I hover over it. And if I click it, it, it could put me through to another URL. Uh, and that's another feature that I didn't put into the ones I uploaded because I had no hot spots I think is what it's labeled as in the code. Um, so there's that and then we can also go small.html which you'll see is the same thing but it's within a little frame here. Um, so I can scroll left and right uh, and so that is our examples. We're going to go back to our index one because that's the one that we're going to modify. Um, and let's just have a quick look at that code because it's very very simple. So I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. Again, always use whatever text editor you prefer to modify. I'm going to bring this down a little bit just to make it easier to read. So first off, I guess I should uh, go back to the GitHub page here. And in here, and actually this is the same thing we've downloaded so we can actually look at it on the file. But if we go uh, into our JavaScript folder here, so we got we got some CSS here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we've got our default images uh, and cursors here so you can modify those which we will be changing out the image here momentarily uh, the readme file which uh, doesn't really say much and you got the index files we looked at but if we go into our javascript folder here you can see that um, it's using some jquery code and here's the the jquery uh, script that we're mainly working with here and as you can see uh, it is released under uh, the MIT license and the GPL license. Uh, so it is uh, free and open source. That's good. Uh, so it's always good to check what um, licenses the codes you're using are under to make sure that you are using them properly. So moving on from there, let's go back into the code Vim index. Uh, and again, you can change the title of your page if you want. I'm just going to leave that. Um, it's linking to the jQuery code online. If you're going to want to run this, you know, locally and not have to worry about internet connections, you may want to download that. But we're not going to worry about that too much. So this is our our, our function here. Really, our only JavaScript at this point. But we're going to add some more here in a moment. Um, and basically, it's it's saying it's using jQuery style of coding, and it's saying find the uh, the the object with the class, the element with the class of panorama view, and then add make it a panorama 360. So this this could be called anything as long as it coordinates with that right there. So we can rename this, but then we'll rename that. And so you could 
theoretically have more than one on a page. Um, going down here, we got our class for our panorama, a little div tag for our view, a uh, container, and then here we have where our image is loaded. So it knows because this image is within this uh, div tag with the class to make this a 360 panorama. Um, but you'll notice that not only does it have the source for the image, um, and it says to use a hotspot, uh, which is the little gray box that I showed you. It also says the width and height of the image. So you have to have the image width and height for this to work properly, which can be kind of annoying if you're going to be using multiple images. Um, the files I uploaded last week, I uploaded a separate HTML file for each image, but we're going to work in some JavaScript today to make it so you can have one HTML and, uh, you know, code and pass it uh, an image file. Uh, so, and then it will calculate the uh, width and height. Uh, it has some alternate text, once again, not necessary. Okay, but then here it says map hotspots. So here we're saying use hotspots. And so it's going, oh, okay, there's a hotspot for this image. And it's saying, okay, here's the hotspot. Uh, create a rectangular shape at these coordinates. Um, it has some alternate text, and then if you want to be able to click on that hotspot and give it a, a, a URL, that's what you put there. Um, and then it's just got some information here down at the bottom about the image. Uh, it's under Creative Commons, the image that it came with. So just to simplify stuff, we're going to remove that there. We're going to remove the hotspot. Um, I'm just going to remove the non-essential stuff for what we're doing, just to make things easier to read, we just say that. Okay, so here we're going to say, once again, each image has a different size. Uh, the images I created last week, just to keep the size down so they load faster on mobile devices, uh, were 400. Um, we'll get into that. We're going to use this default image at first, and then we'll switch it out with one of my images. Um, but what we're going to do here is... Uh, so that we don't have to worry about having a web server because we could do some of this with PHP. We're going to um, use uh, JavaScript here uh, to grab the image and get its height and width. So I'm going to say uh, document dot ready. So I like to start all my jQuery stuff with that making sure the document is loaded. Now before we set the panorama here, I'm going to say uh, var img equals new image. So we're creating an image element here and then we're going to say image dot on load. Uh, so we're going to do this function here. Function. And what is that function going to do? Well, that function's going to set an h for the height. So we'll say h is equal to the image height. And w, oops, image width. And now we're going to say find the element with the class of panorama dash container just still using the same uh, labels that they had in the default code obviously once again you can change that if you'd like and we're going to change the inner HTML uh, and then what we're going to change it to is basically this information here uh, except for without the actual image so we're going to say image source. Let's put this inside single quotes here. I'm going to say plus img dot source, which we'll set here in a second, plus and then we're going to say data dash width, just as we have down here. And we're going to say that's equal to and then once again, we're going to put in a JavaScript variable here of w that we created. Um, and really, we could you know, just put in that right there. But 
this line's going to be long as is, and that's why we create the shorter variable of w. Um, so now we're going to say data, something's not color coded right. I have a quotations backwards here. Data height equals plus h plus, again, I got something wrong there. Quotations, this is, this is all wrong. That should be there, that should be there. See, color coding helps. Okay, <laughs> and then we're going to say, there we go, okay. So we're saying look for the container for the for the div tag that has the class of panorama container, which is right there. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to remove everything inside it right now. Oops. So it's empty to start, but then once our code loads, and I still have something wrong here. That should be that. Okay. Um, once our code loads, it's going to start adding stuff into our HTML, making it a little more dynamic. Um, so at this point, uh, we want to say, yes, that will indent it properly. There we go. So now we'll close that function. And that should actually be tabbed in one more. My tabs are a little off, but that's okay. Now we're going to say img.source equals, and we'll say images forward slash and the name of an image, and I'll just call it one.jpg. We actually don't have an image in there yet. Okay. So I don't think I explained that well while I was typing it. So let's look over it again. So our page is going to load and it's going to load the body tags and these div tags, which display nothing at this point because there's nothing in them but the div tags. Once the document is ready, so once all that is loaded, we're going to start with this function. This function is going to uh, create a variable object of image. What is image going to be? Well, it's going to be a new image. I'm sorry. What is IMG going to be? It's going to be a new image. Okay, so we know it's an image. And um, and I believe this is HTML5. I don't believe this was available in previous versions. Uh, being able to grab uh, image information like this, I could be wrong on that. Um, so then we're going to say when IMG is loaded, because it isn't loaded yet, at that point, then we're going to get the height the width, and then we're going to, once again, find this container, which is right here, and inside it, its HTML is going to be this with the variables, which is what we had before, but now we're loading the image here, so, and then again, then we're going to make that a panorama. So this all gets ready and waits for the image. Well, here we're going to load the image, so the image source is going to be that or whatever, wherever your image is going to be. It could be locally or remotely, you know? So now we don't have to go and figure out our height and width for each of our images. So we can create this HTML code and just replace the image. Now, if you were running this on a web server, you could um, pass it information. Actually, theoretically, you could do it with JavaScript, pass it information in the URL for the image. Um, I've never seen a very clean way of doing that with JavaScript, but with server-side scripts like PHP, you can grab uh, the get posts and get image uh, URLs. Either way, we're saving our time in that we can use the same code over and over again, uh, and we don't have to go and figure out the image uh, height and width. So that's basically what we did there. So we took the, the original code and just made it so we don't have to figure out the height and width is basically what we did. It's a little more coding, but saves you time if you're going to use this a lot. So anyway, if I typed everything right, let's go into our folder, images, and I'm going to copy 
a image that we created last week called cripplecreekview.png. Oh, it's a PNG and inside the, I, I think most web browsers, even if I call a PNG a JPEG, it will transfer it over properly, but let's do this, right? I'm gonna say, copy that to here as PNG. Then I'm going to go back into my image index or my index HTML and I'm going to change this to PNG just because that's what my file is. Once again, theoretically, you could put that in the URL and have your JavaScript look at the URL and cut through it. I've never seen a clean way of doing that, but it can be done. Or if you're actually running this on a server, use PHP or Python or whatever your server side script is. So anyway, we've done that. If I've typed everything right and we go back here and hit F5, this is that 360 from up on the hill of Cripple Creek. This is the really long one that I adjusted uh, because it went up and down so much. If you remember, it was the last thing I did in the tutorial last week. So it's a very long 360 panorama. And any second now, well, we're back at the beginning again. So we can just keep on spinning all we want. We can drag with the mouse. Has a little bit of kinetic activity there. So it keeps going even after you drag a little bit and let go. So that is it. Um, we can quickly review here. Um, again, go to GitHub, get this code. All you really have to do is download the code, put in the URL to your image, and it's height and width. I added a little bit for today's tutorial of adding that uh, JavaScript code that finds out the height and width for you so you don't have to do that. Now, if you wanted to, let me go into just as a little bonus here. If you have Image Magic installed, which is commonly installed, and uh, on, I know on my web server, Image Magic is installed, and it's commonly installed on web servers, I believe, because it, it's used in a lot of image manipulation on the server side. Um, identify is one of the tools that is built in with it. And if I do identify and the image, which is 1.png in this case, and hit enter, it tells you the name of the file, the um, type of uh, image file it is, and it gives you your height and width. Obviously, you can go into any gra graphic editor like GIMP or Photoshop, if you will, um, and look at the that. Lots of times, file browsers, you can right-click and get properties. But if you're working uh, in a shell on a web server and you want to get the uh, size of an image, you can do that. You can also, once again, write it in with the JavaScript to get it as we did or even PHP can do it um, but it's a little less uh, server-side hungry if you do it with JavaScript there's bonuses and, and negatives for both you're a little more control if it's done on the server side um, but we're using JavaScript and HTML5 here anyway so might as well do it on the client side so that is it for this tutorial I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you come back next week. I, uh, once again, I don't normally do tutorials on Wednesday. At least I haven't been um, debating on whether I should start making Wednesdays a tutorial day of some sort uh, and probably will in the near future. Um, this, is, this was half a tutorial, half a review on software, and then the second half was modifying it, so it was a little bit of a tutorial. Uh, so... Again, thank you for watching. Filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.